Hello everybody, I am Keaton of Kinetic Catholic Ministries. This is season 13, episode 7. I hope that you all are having an absolutely wonderful Tuesday so far. I know that I am. Now what I wanted to talk about today is a little bit different um, than what I usually talk about, but I think that it's important. Um, number one, because it's like something that at least I care about. I like to consider myself a Middle Earth nerd. But number two, um, because I think it's important to like Christian entertainment as a whole. Um, and I'll explain what I mean when I get into that. So I want to talk about the Rings of Power. Now, I want to preface this by just for those of you who don't know, the Rings of Power is a TV show uh, being made or has been made by Amazon that is going to premiere this coming Friday on Amazon Prime. Um, and when I initially heard about the show, I was really, really excited to get to go back into Middle Earth. Um, but there's been a lot of questions and a lot of things that, that we need to discuss when it comes to how Middle Earth fits into Christianity. Uh, and secondly, what I want to preface with is that I can make all my assumptions about the shows I want based on the trailers and everything. Ultimately, it hasn't come out yet. Um, I kind of see both sides of it of saying like, oh, you can't judge a show before it's come out. But on the other hand, the Rings of Power has given us like a lot more trailers and promos and interviews than like most shows do. They're like advertising to the fullest extent. So yeah, the show hasn't come out. I'm not going to say that the show is bad if, if it hasn't come out yet. But we, I feel like we have enough to go off of to make safe assumptions about the show. Whether those assumptions are correct or not, that's left, that's left to be seen this Friday when it comes out, right? Um, so... Firstly, it's important to note when J.R.R. Tolkien wrote The Lord of the Rings, when he wrote The Lore of Middle-Earth, it was ingrained with Catholicism and with Christian references. Now, it's not an overtly Christian uh, movie or, or book or literature. It's not one of those things where it's like those who aren't Christians can't enjoy it because it's so filled with Christianity. No, it's enjoyable for everybody, and J.R.R. Tolkien designed it that way. But J.R.R. Tolkien's faith, his Catholicism, was so important to him that the religious undertones and, and the undertones of good versus evil in the story of Middle-earth, it's undeniable. And when Peter Jackson made the Lord of the Rings TV shows in the early 2000s, before I was even born, and it's become my favorite movies ever, just like the books are my favorite books ever, I think it's the greatest story of all time, in my totally unbiased opinion. Um, Peter Jackson kept that. He kept those religious undertones. Obviously, you have to change things going from the books to the movies. Obviously, what works on text isn't necessarily what's going to work on screen. But the reason that I feel the need to talk about it on this channel is because of the fear surrounding Rings of Power that not only will it not stay true to the books, not only will it not be good for Middle Earth, but that it won't stay true to the Christian undertones that are present throughout all of Middle Earth. And there is a lot of evidence to back this up. Number one was the fact that Amazon, Amazon as a whole is safe to say is not a Christian company at all. I understand that this is like the film side of Amazon. This is Amazon Prime specifically. But even then, uh, it's not religious at all. And some could even go as far as to say, and this may be controversial, but some could even say it's anti Christian, um, Amazon as a company, which is just number one thing to be kind of fearful when Amazon's the one in charge of making the Lord of the Rings TV show. Um, but more specifically, that Jeff Bezos asked, that, or essentially, I may be paraphrasing, that he wanted a Game of Thrones type of TV show. And if you know anything about Game of Thrones, you would know that the only way in that it's similar to, to the Lord of the Rings, to Middle Earth, is that it's, okay, Northern European, Middle Age type of style with swords and stuff. Like, that's about other, other, <laughs> otherwise, they are very different things. And that Game of Thrones is in no way Christian and has no Christian undertones like Middle Earth does. Middle Earth is inherently Christian. Um, even just from, from a plot standpoint, uh, we know that the Rings of Power takes place before the Lord of the Rings. We know that they can't cross over with any of the movies. We know that it takes place in the Second Age, and for example, just a quick example of how they're not staying true to the books and not staying true to Tolkien, is that the Hobbits didn't do anything special in the Second Age. Like, they're not written about in the Second Age, and J.R.R. Tolkien intended for that. Really, the Lord of the Rings is the first time the Hobbits really step out and do something, where we see Frodo and Sam set on a journey along with the Fellowship to destroy the One Ring into Mount Doom, into Mordor. Um, they didn't do that in the Second Age. Hobbits didn't, and for some reason we have Hobbits in this show. There's a made-up family, I think it's the Hartfoots or something like that, that are in the show, um, which isn't entirely clear why they felt the need to do that. Uh, secondly, 
uh, is is the character of Galadriel is a big one. Her kind of being the protagonist of the show. There's nothing wrong with her being the protagonist, except that they're having her do things that she never did, like lead armies and stuff. When the Galadriel that we know from the films, very different from this one that's going to be in the TV show, um, which is something to be a little bit worried about. Again, maybe they can change it. Um, one of the things that worried me was in the most recent trailer that dropped, I think about a week ago now, um, there was a line from a hobbit that was something like, we have hearts even bigger than our feet. And like, like I get it, but that's the type of dialogue I feel like like it's not that's not professional writing and that's not what Tolkien intended um, because we know that hobbits have big hearts but there's a difference between showing and telling when it comes to film uh, in the Lord of the Rings shows or, or excuse me the Lord of the Rings movies we see the hobbits have big heart have big hearts right it is shown through what Frodo and Sam do it seems in the Rings of Power they're just telling us that um, and yeah they very well might show it too don't get me wrong but just straight up saying it like. It can be a cringy kind of dialogue that may not be good for the rest of the show. Um, but that's not, that's not what I want to focus this video on. I want to focus this video on the Christian undertone specifically. And that Game of Thrones comparison is really, really scary as, as a Tolkien fan who understands Tolkien's Catholicism, who understands the importance of it. Um, the, the show even fired someone who they had hired who was a Tolkien-like enthusiast who studied Tolkien a lot, who said that they were ruining the lore, they were ruining the Christianity behind it, and the show fired him. So there's it, it's stuff like that, that that makes you worry. Now, what I want to say is the show hasn't come out yet. This show very well may stay true to the religious undertones, may stay true to this idea of good versus evil, um, even if it goes away from what the books say a little bit. Even if it's maybe not a great show, maybe it'll stay true to the Christian undertones. Okay, maybe. But that's a big maybe. Because all that they're changing so far and not staying true to, and then you look at Amazon as a company, and it's kind of... Yeah, no wonder they would avoid religion. No wonder they would avoid the Christian undertones that Peter Jackson made sure to put into his movies because they're written throughout all of Tolkien's works of Middle Earth. Um, I personally am still going to give this show a chance. Um, I was planning on making a video about it once it's all out and sort of, or the first season, and sort of thinking like, did this stay true to Christianity? Now, there are some people who are choosing to boycott it um, as Lord of the Rings fans. I get it. Um, I, I wish that I could be strong enough to choose to boycott it uh, like I do get it. Um, I think, don't get me wrong, I think it deserves a chance, but I think that you can't blame people for being hesitant and you can't blame Christians, blame Catholics for being hesitant. Um, there's not a lot of like Catholic media out there. Um, there's not. And that's part of what made the Lord of the Rings show so great. It's that it's not overtly Catholic, like anybody can go and enjoy it, but there's definitely a lot of Catholicism within those movies. Um, and just as there are within the books, right? The books were first, the literature that Tolkien wrote. And hopefully the Rings of Power is the same way. Now I will say the Catholic media sphere is like, Stepping up its game, we see St. Padre Pio, the, the movie about that, about him coming out soon, right? Shia LaBeouf converting to Christianity because of filming that movie, like, converting to Catholicism specifically, like, that's an amazing thing. Rings of Power, on the other hand, um, I mean, there's, so far, based on what we've seen from the seemingly, like, ton of trailers we've gotten, ton of promos, ton of interviews, there's nothing that can really get a Tolkien fan to think that this is going to be a quality show. Maybe that's a little too harsh to say. Maybe I could be entirely wrong. Wrong. I want to preface it with that. There's a good chance this show is phenomenal, um, but there's also a good chance that it's really, really not. And we just need to stay strong um, as Christians, specifically as Lord of the Rings nerds like myself, um, and understand that like it doesn't matter what society tries to take the Christianity out of. It doesn't matter what society tries to go in this anti-religious path that society is going down. Um, but at the end of the day, Nothing can change what Tolkien originally wrote. If this adaptation of Tolkien's works is bad, we still have Tolkien's works. We still have Tolkien's works that are inherently Christian. If this film adaptation is bad, we still have the Lord of the Rings films from the early 2000s that, in my opinion, are amazing. The greatest films in cinematic history. So we still have these things. Um, the Rings of Power, I think that we shouldn't let it cloud those things, that we shouldn't let it ruin those things. Because at the end of the day, if it's an adaptation that we don't like, then... Okay, then we don't have to watch it, and then we can understand that the original works, that the Lord of the Rings movies are still there. Um, but ultimately, we need to understand that this is what society is trying to do. They're trying to push the Christian values, Christian morals 
out of the realm of entertainment, out of the culture as a whole. And we need to stand our ground, continue to push uh, Catholicism into the culture, because ultimately this is a country built on Christian values, on Christian morals, and it needs to stay that way. And I know the rings of power is just like one little small example of this. I don't mean to say that the rings of power pushing Christianity out is a reflective of all of society. No, like obviously the rings of power is just one small example of that, but there are many, many examples of how um, Christianity is being pushed out of the public realm. I even made one a couple weeks ago with the Addison Ray controversy, right? Made a video on that. I suggest you go check that out. Um, and the Rings of Power, again, another big example. We need to stand our ground, understand that there's no need to send any hate toward any of the actors, to send any hate toward um, the writers, producers, filmmakers, whatever you want to call it. There's no need to send any hate towards them. Um, we just need to understand that at the end of the day, Middle Earth is a is a Christian world inherently. Um, J.R.R. Tolkien wrote it that way, but he still wrote it in a way that anybody could enjoy it, regardless of if they're Christian or not. And we can hope that Amazon stays true to that. And if they choose not to, then we still have the original works. So now that the topic is done, do y'all know what it's time for now? It's time for... The Saint of the Week! And today's Saint of the Week is Saint Francis de Sales, primarily because Saint Francis de Sales is considered the patron saint of literature and, and Catholic press as a whole. He was a 16th to 17th century saint, and despite his father wanting him to be a lawyer and a senator, and Saint Francis de Sales did study law, but he felt a strong calling to the priesthood. He was ordained in 1593 and had a major talent for giving to the poor and preaching and just overall like really impacting people. In the Diocese of Geneva, he was responsible for converting a lot of the Catholics there who had fallen into Calvinism. Um, he did so not just by his preaching, but by these pamphlets that he wrote. Um, and he wrote them with the idea of it going to lay people, going to those who have fallen out of Catholicism to just explain truths about the Catholic faith. And he mass distributed these pamphlets across Geneva, and it converted a ton of them, hence why he's considered the patron saint of the Catholic press. One of the very, very early examples we have of of Catholic press, right, through um, these pamphlets. And when we're talking about Lord of the Rings and Rings of Power, ultimately Catholic press, um, just a little less overt form of it, um, then St. Francis of Sales is a phenomenal saint to talk about. Um, some people considered him quick-tempered, but it was rarely ever seen as he was considered a very gentle, uh, kind, loving person. I mean, he died on December 28th in 1622 and was eventually, obviously, canonized a saint. He is a great example of someone who spent his life dedicating it to God, understanding what was important and what wasn't important in the world, and knowing that that the press, that getting people to learn the truth really, really impacts how they see the world. Um, and in the same way, Catholic press as a whole, aside from just Lord of the Rings, right? Catholic press as a whole, and there's so many great examples of this, EWTN being the biggest, right? Is such a beautiful thing because it's the mass distribution of those Catholic truths, just like what St. Francis de Sales did um, in the 16th and 17th centuries. St. Francis de Sales, pray for us. So before you guys click off this video, Kinetic Catholic Ministries has a brand new shop up. Please go to kineticcatholic.com, click the shop tab, or just go to kineticcatholicshop.com, and there's so many awesome items that you can buy on there. Secondly, I am not just a, a YouTuber, or I don't just make videos, I am also a Catholic speaker. So if you want to book me to come and speak at your church, school, um, uh, conference, men's group, women's group, you name it, please email me directly at Kid Catholic. Mm. I'm not Kid Catholic anymore. Oh my goodness. I just had entirely, ah, at Kinetic Catholic Ministries at gmail.com. That was so bizarre. Um, or reach out to me via Instagram. Uh, the link to all three of my social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram will be linked in the description below. Please go check out our website, Kid, Kinetic Catholic Dot com. I almost said kid again, kineticcatholic.com. We have so many awesome things on there. You can contact us. You can read about our mission. There's just so many great things that you can do on there. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. Please comment any saint or topic suggestions that you might have for future videos. This was Keaton of Kinetic Catholic Ministries. I will see you all next week. And hi, Brielle.